Legandrol LGD 4033. Is this truly the most powerful SARM on the market today? It's thought to be. This SARM, this incredible agent, is used and marketed in the black market for bulking, dry bulking, and strength, like a dry D ball, or thought to be on the same magnitude of Anivar at high doses without the anabolic steroid side effects. There's no free lunch, and this is not necessarily true. But today, I'm gonna present on this video the clinical data that we know scientifically, and of course, my anecdotal experiences. And I wanna start off by saying thank you to all you men, tens and thousands of men, that are trusting me with your emails and your consultations as you tell me personally and you explain what's happened to you specifically about this drug among other steroids. This is the freedom of education to get out so I could show you men, you young men, exactly what may happen if you use this drug. This is so important to me. Let's start right off with the history of SARMs, because that's what this is. SARMs, it goes back only about 15 years. We have the first paper presentation in 2009. Selective androgen receptor modulators, SARMs as function promoting therapies. So everyone knows that SARMs have come into the market to be a better alternative to anabolic androgenic steroids. These, in theory, are tissue-selective anabolic agents on muscle and bone, theoretically leaving out the side effects. That would be androgenicity effects. It's not that simple. The concept is that these agents, these novel agents, will work for people medically because these are going to be medical agents, and we're going to talk about, in the end, how I see the conclusion. Medical therapies focused on muscle wasting, that is called cachexia. Any medical disease, cancer, cachexia, AIDS wasting, COPD, emphysema and bronchitis, transplant patients, there are such an incredible selection to use and look at how this can help people that are older and frail. And that's the key, older and frail. And that's exactly where these agents will end up. It will happen soon. And of course, there is a potential for abuse as we see with testosterone and old fashioned steroids. This is incredible. Osteoporosis, this is mainly gonna be elderly women that break their hips. You'll see the data age-related sarcopenia. That's just getting older and losing muscle mass. It happens to everyone. Multifactorial issues, not just hormones. The thought is that these agents will stimulate muscle and bone and limit side effects. And in the research on these papers, cardiovascular side effects and prostate side effects. That's where the initial research was focused. And other side effects relevant for you. Hair loss, acne, gynecomastia, liver and kidney issues, and testicular shutdown, which is definitely the underlying theme and what I'm gonna show you, what I've learned on this video from my clinical experiences. The initial SARMs are not these SARMs. The initial SARMs, if you look at the literature, are actually steroidal SARMs back in the 1960s. They realized that the basic initial steroids from the 30s, 40s, and 50s into the 60s had side effects, mainly on the prostate. It's actually, and shutting down the male system. So what did they do? 
They made 19 nor steroids and DHT derived steroids. There we have them today, Decaderabalum, Anovar. This is incredible. So the initial SARMs were steroidal SARMs. And then fast forward, only 2003, where you started seeing just after the turn of the century, not long ago, non-steroidal selective androgen receptor modulators. That's what Legandrol is. It's a non-steroidal, not a steroidal SARM. So I want to set that up scientifically. So the history now of Legandrol itself, LGD4033, or also known as VK5211. It's an investigational non-steroidal SARM. It was initially discovered and created by Ligand Pharmaceuticals, currently being developed by Viking Therapeutics. Now again, this is, these are two pharmaceutical companies that are working on developing this right now. Let's look at the classic studies that have been associated with this, and there are very limited. There's only two clinical studies that you can find in the research for this agent. There is a phase one trial in 2013 that I'm gonna discuss here with the literature that showed 76 men Adult men with varied doses of this agent showed different increases in lean body mass, and they state no significant adverse effects in 21 days. We'll talk about that, and I'm going to nail down some of the details and some of the small print that they found in this study. Now, there's a phase two trial, appears to be ongoing, initially started November 2016, 120 patients recovering from hip fracture after surgery. I assume they're women because who breaks their hip? Elderly women, osteoporosis. You see, these are gonna be teed up for medical utility. This is a randomized study with various doses of Legandrol, and it's gonna be 12 weeks after they have broke a hip and had surgical fixation. It's interesting that their primary endpoints are improved lean body mass. Well, and that's all they say. So I assume this is not concluded. If anyone knows what happened to the study, let's find out. I'd like to find out because I couldn't find anything on it. I would criticize this study and I would say your endpoint primarily is lean body mass. These are going to be women that have fractured hip. I'd want to see them recovering to their activity of daily lives. Because as a physician caring for many women, unfortunately, I've seen fracture their hips and have repair. It's, it's a typical future. The prognosis after a hip fracture is not good, functionally or in death and mortality. So I want to see, does this drug help them recover in physical therapy? Are they progressing better than the, the same matched control? That's the bottom line, and I'm assuming that's what's going on but it's very, very mysterious. I don't know what's going on with that study. We're gonna to have to see. The legal status, this is incredible. It's an investigational drug. So it's not an approved drug by the FDA, so it really is in a gray zone, and that's why it is sold on the internet. It's banned by WADA. Absolutely, it's been banned for a number of years. And you can see a whole list of individual athletes that have been uh, caught by this drug. It's sold on the internet for research purposes only and not for human consumption. I'm just bringing the information to you guys. So what I want to bring on this political or legal aspect of this presentation is that look what's going on. Now we have in Congress on hold the SARMS Control Act of 2019 where they're looking to add all SARMS under current legislation that outlaws them under a Controlled Substance Act. This is going to be incredible. Obviously, due to what's going on with COVID and the pandemic, everything is frozen up. It's going to be interesting to see when everything picks back up, what happens with this. So the SARMS Control Act of 2019 is going to be very interesting to see the future of this drug on the internet and how people can obtain this and what quality is gonna be going on with these drugs. 
Also, the China ban. China announced also in the, in the end of 2019 that they're going to be limiting the raw material for steroids and SARMs. This is going to be incredible. Superimposed currently on COVID-19 pandemic with supply chain effects. I just happen to wonder what's going to happen to this drug. Now, let's go into the side effects from this drug, both clinical side effects from the studies and also in my experience, as I've talked to so many men over the last several years who are just using this as a SARM. Again, now I'm gonna discuss this as a sole agent because so many times it's used with other steroids or PEDs. I'm just gonna pull my information from men I've talked to and I've listened to over the years just using this drug by itself. Okay, so number one side effect for you guys and this is my number one take home message. It's suppressive on the hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis. Let's look at the report. First off, I have evidence-based support for this. This is the Journal of Gerontological Science A, Biologic Science and Medical Sciences. This is 2013 and they talk about this drug. They talk about exactly the components of it and I find out in results, LGD-4033 administration was associated with dose-dependent suppression of total testosterone, sex hormone binding globulin, high-density lipoprotein cholesterol, and triglyceride levels. Follicle stimulating hormone and free testosterone showed significant suppression at one milligram dose only. That is incredible. Let's talk about this. That's with one milligram. That's only for several weeks. They showed that natural testosterone levels were shut down. Now, not to mention, what are the doses being used in the underground? I'm not going to say the doses. You guys know those doses. Huge doses, 10 times or much more than that. Men are using that just openly using that. That's what's recommended on all these SARM sites. When I talk to you men after using this drug, you're shut down. Again, on 10 times the dose, if not much more, you're shut down. And why would you need PCT? So everyone's recommending, well, you got to do PCT <clears throat> with tamoxifen or clomid or HCG. Does it make sense? You're getting shut down. This is number one. You're going to get shut down. And it says in some of the anecdotal data and some of the reading online, it says, well, it's, you're not going to get shut down as bad as steroids and you're going to come back in 30 days versus a year with the steroids. It is amazing because there's no data directly on this clinically, but I could tell you from my experiences with hundreds of men like yourselves just on this drug and other SARMs used as a sole agent that I've seen men suffer with depression mainly because of their shutdown and they have no sex drive now and they're 23 years old. I've seen it six months after stopping the drug with or without PCT. I've seen it up to a year and even rarely 18 months. Now, there's no studies. It's just my clinical data. And again, thank you, man, for reaching out to me with this. So this is the number one concern. If you're doing your research and you're seeing this video and you've never done steroids, you're 15, 18, 20, 23, or even in your 30s, and you're thinking this is a safe alternative, please believe me, it may not be a safe alternative. I'm doing the best I can to show you the data scientifically, and now I'm bleeding out to you, please, to really show you that I've heard these men is it rare? It's not going to happen to me. It's all gambling in Vegas. Make the decision for yourself, and I hope you don't use these agents. Just try skateboarding. Try mountain biking. Do something else. I'm trying to keep you away. If you come into the world of this, you may end up on testosterone for the rest of your life. At 23, at 20, at 35, that's your decision. Number one risk, suppression. Next, I'm going to move through. Hair loss. Everyone talks about shedding. It doesn't convert to DHT. It can't do that. Well, you know what? It can. 
and you don't even know what drugs you're getting on the internet. Number two, gynecomastia. Interesting, it doesn't convert. It's not aromatizable. Everyone agrees it's a SARM, but interesting, off cycle, your body reflexes because it's been shut down and then you're destabilized and you get gynecomastia just like you came off of other steroids. You have this instability of your hypothalamus pituitary going into axis and your body's trying to right itself and you have super physiologic estradiol. At least you get sensational, if not full gynecomastia lumps. So you can get gyno, not on the drug probably, but off the drug. Cardiovascular, this is what my claim to fame is, more for the older guys, because if you're young, if you're 15, 18, 25, I'm humble for you, men. You, you're not gonna care about your heart effects at that age. Some guys do, and that's great, most don't. You want gains, and you want great sex. I'm telling you, this is gonna affect the sex potentially, so consider that. Gains, gains are gains. What can happen with the heart? The literature shows it affects abnormally lipids. It takes the good cholesterol down, just like steroids. It can cause hypertension. That's all over the internet. I'm seeing details like it, if you used it long enough and you have the right genes and bad luck, could you get LVH and cardiomyopathy? You can damage your heart. Please believe me, it's all gambling in Vegas numbers. One out of 100, one out of 1,000. Could it be you? I see those cases. I do see those cases. Next, muscle tendon ruptures. If this drug is like a steroid and it's hitting your muscle tendons, actually some of these SARMs are fluoroquinolone derived drugs. Very complicated. You look at fluoroquinolone antibiotics, they cause ruptures, tendon ruptures. So these drugs can grow muscle, but they can make tendons weaker and rupture again. I've seen all these independently in my clinical assessments when you men trust me with consultations. CNS, that's the brain. It does cause suppression, guaranteed to cause suppression. It's in the literature and I see it anecdotally. Now I've said it 10 times. I apologize for that. I'm trying to drive this fact home. Then you have depression. Is a man depressed because his sex drive is now bad and his testosterone naturally is low and he feels bad about that? And is he depressed because he has underlying depression? If you have underlying depression, so many people have it, it's almost like a normal variant. Life is so tough that if you have any depression and you destabilize your natural production, you're not gonna feel better in the post period. So you're gonna be chasing this with PCT and then ending up on testosterone. I'm just telling you the truth. Conclusion, the future of this drug probably is gonna come onto the market in the next 10 years. Let's not talk about the politics and the haters and who's making money on it. It's gonna come out for good, probably of elderly people and people that have those medical issues that are cachectic and that have broken a hip and to make their bones and muscles. Keeping your grandmother or grandfather home so they can live at home and their activities of daily life are stable and they're strong and they don't have to go to a nursing home. If we could use an agent like this, that's gonna be great. I have no conflicts on this financially. I will not get involved with the production of this drug. I'm just telling you the truth. This drug's gonna come out. It's gonna be good for people that are middle-aged and losing muscle mass and older. It's gonna be abused. That's why I'm educating you on this. It's abused already for young people that theoretically don't need to build more muscle or bones, but everyone wants more muscle. This is what I'm trying to show the world and physicians of the world to understand that it's not bad to want more muscle and to better yourself, but I'm trying to show you guys that there's no free lunch. So please be careful, and I really hope this presentation limits and has you as a young man consider to hold off on starting this drug or any other steroid for the sake of shutting yourself down and having to live, making that mistake and having to live on testosterone for the rest of your life. Thank you so much.